So I'm here to pick up a couple iconic guitars from Eric. Where do guitarists go to make their deals? The parking lot of Guitar Center. You got the stuff? I got, I, I got the money if you got the stuff. I got it. What? Let's go. How y'all doing? Thanks so much for stopping by for yet another video. I'm Cool Caparoon, and uh, this has been possibly one of the most requested videos uh, that I've ever considered doing. Uh, I've had people asking about this ISO cab for years. For years and years, every, people have been asking me to make a video about it, so it's finally here. Everything that you heard on that piece of music was recorded through this ISO cab, and I just want to take a second to touch on the signal chains and the gear that I'm using, uh, so that way you guys, yeah, guitars are nerds. We're all nerds. If I was watching a video like this, I would want to know everything that was being used. So, uh, all the guitars in this video were iconic guitars. Um, I'm super pumped on it. This one's mine, and uh, used a couple others that are on loan to me. Freaking amazing guitars, absolutely love them. Uh, and then from that, every single guitar went into this Lauren Audio Spitfire Overdrive pedal. It's literally one of my all time favorite overdrive pedals. Everything that I'm gonna talk about in this entire video, parts to build the ISO cab, all the gear that I was using, signal chains, like everything, there'll be links in the description for as much stuff as I can possibly put in there, so. Lauren Audio Spitfire, and then half of the guitar tracks were done with the Friedman Small Box 50. This is actually the Wildwood Edition, so it has three channels, uh, unlike the normal Small Box. Um, so one side of the rhythm guitars and the solo was done on the Friedman, and the other side of the rhythm guitars was done on the Third Power Citizen Gain CSR 40, and then they went straight into the ISO cab. There's a Weber Legacy speaker currently in the ISO cab. We'll go over more on that in a second. Um, and then out of that, half of the guitar tracks went into a pair of Coil Audio CA70S mic pre's. And the other half of the guitars went through a pair of Cappy Hyder mic pre's. Oh, and the microphones in the cabinet are a Biodynamic M201 and a Royer R121. So, the real reason why you clicked on this video probably is to see this ISO cab. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> uh, well, there it is. <laughs> This is the ISO cab. Ah, it's solid as a rock. <laughs> okay, so I'm out of breath between moving this behemoth and uh, playing that song. I'm, I'm out of breath. So I've had so many people ask about this and I'm pumped to finally be in a position and be doing videos where I can finally do a video on this bad boy. Um, I built this thing myself and the reason why I built it is uh, before I moved to Nashville, I've been in Nashville for five years. Before I moved to Nashville, I had a huge studio uh, commercial space right downtown in Peoria, Illinois where I'm from. And I used to just record guitars, electric guitars, like everybody else, just putting microphones in front of cabinets and letting her eat. Um, but when we decided to move here, I knew that we were gonna end up in an apartment. There's just no way around it. I wasn't even willing to try to buy a house or buy a commercial space or get into a commercial space until I got into town and got my feet under me. 
And so the options were, uh, re the real options, remember this is five years ago at the time of the filming of this video. The real options were Kemper, Axe FX, um, or buying an ISO cab to plug your real tube amps into. I thought real hard about it. I almost went with a Kemper. Back then, I felt like the Kemper was a little bit more realistic. I had done some profiles for them in the earliest stages. I had done some, made some profiles for, for them, but it just wasn't quite there. And more so than that, uh, I wanted clients to be able to come in and use their own rigs. And so I didn't want to force, since I was gonna be in an apartment, which there's another video going over my apartment home studio here in Nashville. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for that as well, where I go over like the entire studio and my situation. And that that's really where I landed when I first moved to town. Um, and I really didn't want to have people over and require, like they had no choice but to plug into an Axe FX or a Kemper. Uh, I wanted them to be able to use their own rig. And so ISO cabs seemed like the way to go. Um, but I started looking at ISO cabs and there wasn't really any ISO cabs on the market that were quiet enough for what I wanted. I wanted to be able to plug a 50 watt head in, tube head, turn it all the way up at midnight in an apartment. That's what I needed to do. Um, and most of the ISO cabs on the market were like 30 or 35 dB noise reduction. And that, that just wasn't enough. That's just like putting a pair of earplugs in, a regular pair of earplugs. And, uh, and I needed something much, much quieter. So, decided to design my own. So once I had decided to build it, I had to figure out what the goals for it were. Um, and I basically had two goals. It had to be small enough to fit through an apartment door, a normal door. It had to be able to slide through a regular door uh, while being more than twice as quiet as any other ISO cab currently available. So the basic principle behind soundproofing something, because that's really what this is, it's a soundproof box. There's two ways to get soundproofing, and this goes for the construction of your studio or for something like this. Uh, mass and or decoupling. And so the idea was to create something that was so thick and so heavy that sound wouldn't come out of it, and then also suspend something inside of here so the vibrations didn't even reach this outer cabinet. So with that being said, let's take a look at it. All right, so here is the cabinet. Um, as you can see, there is a cabinet suspended on the inside here. This is literally hanging on these four rubber straps. And inside this cabinet oh, is the actual speaker and the microphones. So the inside of this is very crude and you could choose to make this however pretty or crude that you would like. So this cabinet is made out of birch. It's 5 8 birch uh, plywood, which is a little bit expensive. Um, and basically I just built this as a speaker cabinet and then the rest of it as a microphone. Uh, section. Um, these are all one piece, like the sides are all one piece, and then there's a baffle, uh, just like a speaker cab would have set in there that the speaker mounts to. And what we see here and here is actually acoustic treatment. This is Echo Cell. You could use 703 or 705 or any sort of studio grade insulation. And so in here we just got a couple real short stands uh, with a Biodynamic M201 and a Royer R121. And I just tried to stuff it full of insulation as much as I can. So I built this inner cabinet and then hung it on these straps, as you can see here. These are just rubber bungees that have the holes all the way through them. And then we got eye bolts going in and S hooks holding the bungees. And so this whole thing floats in here. It's completely on its own and it's just completely suspended. And the point behind that is that this cabinet is obviously going to resonate pretty hard. You got a guitar amp turned all the way up. But when the lid goes on it, it contains a lot of the sound, but the cabinet itself still vibrates a ton. Um, and this is the issue with all ISO cabs. All ISO cabs on the market are basically just this, just this cabinet on its own. And so in order to make it more than twice as quiet as any other ISO cab I could find, the move was to decouple this cabinet on these rubber straps and then build this heavy, heavy outer cabinet. Um, I'm gonna throw up some pictures here so you can kind of see their old pictures uh, that I took with a cell phone back in the day when I built this thing. So you'll, you'll see some pictures of the construction right now, but basically the outer cab is made of three quarter inch plywood 
um, with a layer of green glue and then 5 8 drywall with a layer of green glue and then another layer of 3 quarter inch plywood. And so the whole thing is, is about 2, 2 and a half inches thick, uh, almost 3 inches thick. And it is, it is extremely dead and extremely robust and extremely heavy. This cabinet had to be basically soundproof, the outer cabinet. And I did this in steps here, as you can kind of see. And then the, the lid has those same steps, so that way it has multiple seals on it uh, when you put the lid on. Multiple points of contact, I should say, to seal it. And the other thing that I should say that you probably won't be able to tell from the photos is that all of these layers, these three layers on this outer cab here, um, all of the seams, I, so I basically built the outside layer as a whole box and then put the layer on the inside uh, of the drywall and then put the layer of the uh, the second layer of plywood inside that and basically you alternate joints so your first joint hopefully you can see this so your first joints are gonna be like this and then your second joints are gonna be like that and then your third joints are gonna be like this and so there's no actual clear path for the sound to go all the way through all the layers because they're 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 mismatched like this and so every layer has a different pattern um, and that combined with the green glue in between the layers uh, and sealed with um, epoxy. Every layer is sealed with epoxy all the way around. Um, and then I have stuffed some acoustic insulation just in here to help absorb, you know, a little bit more resonances in there. So uh, it's a little beat up because we have moved across the country and I've just had this thing for years, but this is the lid and you can see a little bit more clearly these three different levels. And so just measuring this out so that this fits really, really tight in here, uh, it creates a really good seal. That's what make this, makes this ISO cab the quietest ISO cab commercially available for sure. And definitely one of the quietest that I've ever uh, heard about. <laughs> So the last thing that I should mention here is how the connections are actually made. Um, I just took XLR panel uh, jacks and screwed them in there. And then that's the speaker jack there. And I drilled holes from the inside of the inner cabinet, ran the wires through, epoxied it, um, and then drilled holes in this outer cabinet and uh, put those jacks in and epoxied those as well to try to seal it up as best as possible. Okay, so all in all, this cabinet took about 40 hours to design and build. I could probably do it faster than that now that I kind of have an idea of how I would do it. Um, the design is basically set. I built this five years ago, so keep that in mind, but this cost about $1,200 to build. By the time I bought all the plywood, it is a lot of plywood. I don't remember how many sheets it was, but it was a lot. It was way more than you would think for a cabinet this size. By the time I bought the green glue and all the plywood and the drywall and all the hardware and the jacks and the wiring and like these latches were pretty expensive. I'm going to try to find a link to, to these latches uh, and put it in the description. Uh, again, all the links for everything I can find will be in the description uh, so you can build this if you'd like to. So there's a lot of talk about ISO cabs on the market not really sounding that great, kind of sounding muffled and not very big and not very open. Uh, and this cabinet sounds really, really great. Some of the best guitar tones I've ever gotten in my whole career have come from this cabinet. Um, and I really think that that is due to a couple things. One, it's due to the size of the internal cabinet. It's a pretty large internal cabinet. Um, and how much acoustic treatment I have inside there. When you look at other cabinets, other ISO cabs on the market, pretty much all of them just have like some, some cheap foam or a little bit, you know, like the inside of a car subwoofer is pretty much all any of them have on the inside. And so this has, you know, like in the microphone section, like an entire foot thick section of actual real like acoustic treatment, like you would use to treat your walls in a studio. You could use Owens Corning 705 or 703. Uh, the stuff that's in this cabinet is called Echo Cell. There's not a lot of distributors for Echo Cell. They had it in Illinois. I can't get it here in Nashville. Um, but I'll put the link to their website in the description as well. 
So I really think that that's why this cabinet sounds really great is mostly because of all that acoustic treatment in there and it absorbs a lot of the a lot of the standing waves inside that cabinet. Pros and cons. The pro is that you can plug any guitar amp into this. You can plug any amp into it. You can run two microphones. You can swap microphones out. Um, it's extremely quiet. When I tested it right after I built it, it was about as best as I could judge with a dB meter, it was about 65 dB reduction. So that's, you know, depending on what you're doing, like that's two or three times quieter than most of the other cabinets on the market. I'm sure someone out there has made their own who is as, which is as quiet as this, but I've definitely never seen one this design and I've definitely never seen one that is this quiet. That is this small that could fit through the door of an apartment or the average door of your house. So cons. Uh, there's only a couple. One of the cons is that it is extremely heavy. This thing probably weighs 500 pounds. Um, I would guess inner and outer cabinet all put together like it sits right here probably weighs 500 pounds. So it's extremely heavy. The time to build was, was pretty extreme. Like I said, it took me about 40 hours to build this cabinet. And part of that is because I was designing it as I was building it. I was kind of figuring it out as I went. I had the concept. The concept I knew that I was going to go with extremely dense, thick, three layers on an outer cabinet and the inner cabinet was going to be suspended on rubber straps. I had that concept, but actually putting it uh, into use and actually building it took some real time and finding the right materials and finding the latches and it took some real time. Back when I built it, it cost about $1,200 to build this cabinet. Lumber is way more expensive now than it was then. I would venture to guess that it would cost about $1,500 to build this now. I have gotten a whole rack of speakers uh, that get swapped in and out of this cabinet depending on what I'm after. There's, you know, a bunch of Weber speakers. I'm a huge fan of Weber speakers, but, and then I've got like some Celestians and some Jensen's. And so I can swap the speaker out of this pretty easily uh, depending on what it, a vibe that I'm actually after. So for those of you still watching and still interested in more, first of all, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, and give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And let me know what you think, what your favorite ISO cab is, what, just whatever. Leave me a comment <laughs> if you want to. But a little bit more information on like the acoustic design of this. So like I very briefly mentioned earlier, there are uh, two ways to to soundproof, and, and this is the same whether you're trying to soundproof a room like this for your studio, or whether you're trying to, to make a soundproof box, and the first way is with mass. And basically what that means is, is it takes weight. Mass is weight. Um, and so the, the thicker and the heavier and the denser something is, the harder time sound has getting through it. And so the concept for this outer cabinet was to make as much weight and as much density as humanly possible. The reason why I went with multiple different layers of different stuff, this is very common in studio windows. Uh, studio windows will very commonly have two panes of glass and the, the two panes are different thicknesses. And the reason for that is because a, a pane of glass has a specific frequency that that piece of glass will resonate at. Um, and if you put another piece of glass that is the same thickness, they will resonate together. However, when you use uh, one piece of glass that is one thickness and another piece of glass that is a different thickness, they have different resonant frequencies. And so it is much harder for sound to get through both of them than if they were the same uh, thickness. And so that was the idea behind this five eighths dry or three quarter inch uh, plywood and then five eighths drywall and then another layer of um, three quarter inch plywood. So three layers. And so the idea was, first of all, drywall is very dense. Um, it is one of the, it, for bang for buck, there's denser things out there, but for, you know, a sheet of drywall is eight or nine bucks. Um, for eight or nine dollars worth, it is the most density that I could get into this cabinet. So that's one of the reasons why I put the drywall in there. The other reason is that I needed a different thing, a different material that was that was not plywood uh, that to change that resonant frequency. The resonant frequency of, of drywall is much, much lower than the resonant frequency of plywood. Um, and so when you sandwich them all together like that, it's really, since they all resonate at different frequencies, it's very hard for sound to get all the way through all of them. The next thing is green glue. Let me go grab some, I'll show you. Okay, this is green glue. Um, 
So basically, this it comes in a caulk tube, and the idea behind this, what it does, is you put it between two layers of drywall. Uh, that's what it's commonly used for. You put a sheet of drywall up on the wall, then you put one tube of this per four by eight sheet. So you would put a whole tube of this on the next sheet, and then put that sheet up, so that way you're doing two layers of drywall with this between the two layers. And basically what this does, the reason why this is different than caulk or epoxy or silicone or anything else, is because unlike all of those things, this will never dry. Uh, this stays tacky and pliable forever, it never dries. And so you put this between two layers. And so in this particular case, I've got plywood and then a whole tube. I calculated it out, uh, what the, the surface area was but my ratio was one tube per four by eight sheet. And so what happens is sound, we're trying to keep sound in in this case. So the sound hits that first layer of plywood and that layer of plywood resonates a little bit. And then this is in between that piece of plywood and the middle layer of drywall. And so that green glue helps control the transmission of vibration from the interior layer to the drywall. So a certain amount of sound will get stopped by that first layer of plywood. And then this helps control the transmission of that sound to the layer of drywall. And then another layer of this between the drywall and the outer layer of plywood. And so you've just got a sandwich that uh, every single layer is dropping the transmission of vibration down drastically. The second way that you control sound is by decoupling. Um, this is where people get in, in studio builds, they get into talking about floating floors and this gets really nerdy. But the general idea is that if you decouple something, what decouple something means is like this is vibrating, but this vibration can't get to this because they're, they're separated, they're not touching. So that's why the, this interior cabinet is hanging on those rubber straps. So that interior cabinet vibrates like, like crazy. This is a lot of vibration there. And very little of that vib vibration physically reaches this outside cabinet because very little of that vibration actually transfers through those rubber straps. What sound actually does hit this exterior cabinet is just residual vibrations coming off of the interior cabinet and just kind of bouncing around inside here. And so that is the concept behind it. That's why this works. Um, I hope that wasn't too long and rambling, uh, but there was so, there's some real specific reasons why I did it this way, and there's some real specific reasons why it works as well as it does. And for those of you that are really actually interested in building your own ISO cab, um, these are the reasons why this one works, and these are the reasons why this one sounds the way that it does. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you hanging out and uh, sticking with me all the way to the end. Uh, again, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe and the bell icon next to it and give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment and let me know what you think. Go check out some of the other videos. Hit all the links in the description. I'm going to do my very best to hit uh, to put every link for everything that you need uh, in the description for this and for all the other gear that I used in this video. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys later. Peace.